Hey guys, today I have a very special guest here. I'm sure all of you guys, or most of you guys know who he is. This is John Kohler. He has three YouTube channels actually, and one of them is Growing Your Greens, and there's uh, OK Raw, also Discount Juicers. John, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I garden, <laughs> like, I grow food, <laughs> and I eat plants. <laughs> and he made this drink. And I made this drink today. Yeah, this drink is uh, actually cactus fruit. Uh, juice made with uh, coconut milk. So I make everything fresh. It's mature coconuts. I take out the meat, blend it with young coconut water, and then I basically um, take off the skin of all the cactus fruits and feed that through the juicer while I'm pouring through this mixture. I do have a video on that. And then it turns out like this. So like you got some fat content, so it makes the juice taste better. Also you get a better uptake of some of the different beta lanes and other nutrients in the cactus fruit. Yeah, this is so delicious, man. So I thought that there's so many gardening videos for you that we're just gonna talk about like food preparations and how you make your food or juices or salad dressings or just some tips for you know my viewers because a lot of times people like even starting to grow more exotic vegetables and they have no clue what to do with the food mm. that they grow. And like I said, you have plenty of videos on gardening so we're just gonna talk about your diet. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. You know, I think important to me, I mean, even before I started gardening actually, I was, I've been preparing food now right. for the last 24 years on the diet program I'm on which I would call a, a nutrient-dense, um, you know, minimally processed fruit and vegetable dominated diet. You know, so my, my, the goal of my diet and what I'm doing is I'm trying to eat as much nutrition with the few, fewest calories as possible um, because according to the research that I've seen and continue to learn every day, like I was on scholar.google.com the other day and looking up PubMed studies on the benefits of juicing, which I'll have an upcoming video on, like, oh my God, so many cool benefits of juicing even though some people say juicing's bad because you remove the fiber um, but yeah so I've been preparing food now for 24 years on my on my plan where I really maximize the most nutritious foods on the planet which are the vegetables um, and the fruits as well as let's not forget the leafy greens or the herbs yeah and like you said juicing that is not your only diet you're, you're getting the juice but you're getting smoothies and your soups so you and your salads so you're getting lots of fiber right yeah so I don't recommend anybody live on a juice fast for any long period of time maybe to do a little cleanse or something might be great but you know juice augments and supplements my diet and allows me to take in more of the fruits and vegetables than I would otherwise to get higher levels of nutrition and also more importantly my climate works an arid climate stay hydrated yeah so why don't you share maybe a few of your favorite or things that you normally do what are the, the juices or the what do you usually put in your juices? <laughs> I mean, like the normal stuff. I mean, the regular. I would say normal. I mean, to be honest <laughs> with you, Wendy, my, my juices are based around what's on sale. Yeah. At, you know, that I could get organic or what's in my garden growing, you know. So this time of year, I have lots of, uh, like, mostly collard greens, tree collards. I have lots of tree collards growing. And so I have those in plentif plentiful harvests. And so I'll harvest, like, large leaves um, for juicing. And especially you guys want to be juicing the stems. The stems have higher mineral content versus the, the leaves have the more phytonutrients and phytochemicals. A lot of times when you eat uh, leaves of collards or kale or Swiss chard, you might just eat the leaves and throw out the stems. And so I really like to juice the older ones. Uh, right now I have a lot of baby greens and, you know, I don't, I'm not feeling comfortable where I'm just going to harvest them and juice them yet. You know, if they're baby greens like this, I'd rather pick them and eat them in salads or I'll pick them and maybe blend them up into, into um, vacuum blended smoothies or vacuum blended salads. Um, I could take some of the greens and pick them and I've been making like rolls with nori rolls lately. Very simple, just some chopped greens with avocado and maybe some kind of sauce over the top with blended nuts, seeds and more, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables blended in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I do so many different things. So it's, it's I can't just say I only juice or only do this yeah. and, you know, people think, oh, juice, you remove the fiber. So, you know, in juice, you're, you do remove some of the fiber. You know, there's many kinds of fiber. The two main classified types are soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, the soluble fiber is soluble or dissolves in water. So even when we're drinking this juice, and cactus fruit has a good a bit amount of soluble fiber, we're still getting some fiber in there. We're just removing the, some of the other fiber, um, the insoluble fiber that, that basically comes out of the juicer. And even, even then, depending on the juice you're using, some juices will keep the insoluble fiber in the juice because it'll put a lot of pulp in the juice. Definitely. Like this one, I can still taste a little bit of texture of that coconut fiber. Yeah, so yeah. the texture of the coconut's still it's in there good, a little though, bit. Like yeah, little you, and you can kind of see the little mm -hmm. white specks in there. Yep. That's probably good for some people to start because some people are not used to having such high fiber in their diet. Would you say juice is kind of like 
Depends uh, on your juicer, too, I guess. So I think that, you know, juicing, with everything in life, there's pros and cons. As much as I'm a big advocate for juicing, you know, I think, you know, for the right person, it could be very beneficial or it might not be so good for some people, mm -hmm. right? What I'll say is this, you know, if you're on a standard American processed food diet where they're processing out the fiber and you're eating a lot of animal foods and animal foods in excess and processed foods, you know, animal foods has like zero fiber, man. So even a juice, but you remove the fiber. Well, this still has more fiber than like cheese or meat or milk, you know. So we, I don't want to argue about that, but I, want, I, I do want to say that fiber is very important for us and not just for us. But for more importantly, our microbiome, based on you know new and emerging research that's coming out that I'm seeing all the time, like one of the studies I'll be highlighting soon in my YouTube channel for my discount juicers is actually there's a study they did, and it showed that by simply only adding juice and the diets of the people in the study did not change otherwise, it increased their microbiome or types of bacteria in their gut wow. by juice, and this was made by the slow juicer similar to the one I use. So. Even the slow juice is removing some of the fiber, but not all of it. It is increasing the microdiversity of the of your microbiome or the bacteria in your gut. So I mean, that's how powerful juicing is. And yeah. people say juicing removes the fiber; it's bad. It still yeah. it still creates a higher level of microbiome in your gut. All, not even to mention the higher levels. Another study I'm highlighting is actually they gave like it was a one day study or something lame like. They gave, like, I think it was pasteurized watermelon juice. I don't recommend pasteurized juice. I recommend making your fresh juices. Yeah. But it was pasteurized watermelon juice, and then they tested the blood levels of lycopene in the ladies mm -hmm. that took it, and it raised their lycopene levels from oh, having yeah. pasteurized juice. So even pasteurized juice, not that I recommend that, you know, will give us our body our need, the, the, the needs and, and get our needs met of different phytonutrients and phytochemicals that can be deficient in processed food products. Oh, yeah, for sure. And a lot of times, you know, when you buy, like, the store-bought juices... They're actually not the same. Even like the cold press, oh, right? Yeah. It's not, yeah. I mean, I really don't, I really advocate, I mean, as much as I'm an advocate for juices, I'm not an advocate of like pasteurized shelf stable store bought juices. You know, it's always better to make it yourself. There's enzymes, there's nutrients, there's phytochemicals. There's also, more importantly, beneficial microbes, especially, you know, harvesting stuff out of my garden. I use things like compost tea and I inoculate beneficial soil microorganisms and different things into my soil and they're going to be on my plants living and we when we juice that raw and fresh right we're going to get some of the, the that micro bi, microbiota into us and this is not going to appear in a pasteurized juice because the goal of pasteurization is to kill all bacteria because industry thinks that bacteria can be bad which it can be i mean you get e coli they had all this all these outbreaks by improper farming practices improper improper sterilization of equipment in factories so they want to kill everything but that leaves you with a less nutri net less nutritive product in the end <laughs> yeah for sure so what would you say recommend say some people that are starting to get into juicing or making smoothies and they should add greens into it but they don't like that green taste do you have like would you add some citrus or some sort of like a sour tasting or something to kind of neutralize that sort of strong green taste Right, yeah, so I try to, like, balance, well, I'm good with, like, drinking oh, yeah, straight juice. What was I drinking? <laughs> oh, I, I drank, this morning I drank, like, a ginger, straight ginger with turmeric and lemon shot. Like, probably, oh, like, yeah. that much of the cup. Mouth must be on fire. Uh, yeah, it was, it's fun, though. It, like, kind of warms me up, and especially in the winter yeah. time. You know, it's really nice. And then my friend came over, she had, like, that much, and she's, like, she's going to feel like she's going to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you must be toxic. No, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so let's see, green, so... I mean, here's a trick on greens, right? Number one, start off with mild greens, right? Use romaine lettuce. Root, juice romaine lettuce hearts. You should be able to drink that almost straight, <laughs> hopefully, because there's like it's not even that bitter, not even that strong. I guess the next thing I would say is get good quality greens, right? Greens that have been picked and shipped and brought to Whole Foods, and then you buy it organic and you bring it home, and you might live in Florida or you know Nebraska or wherever. Those greens are old, man. They start tasting. Yeah, they start tasting nasty. I don't even like. I don't even like juice of them, man. I'm so <laughs> spoiled with. If I want to juice greens, I come out to my garden and I pick a leaf, bring it in fresh. Especially this time of year in the winter time, every every green in my garden gets sweeter. So if you've eaten only kale in the summertime, eat it in the winter. It's going to be sweeter because the cold basically brings the sugars out in the plant, so the plant doesn't freeze uh, during the cold spells. But so yeah, then try to source better quality, grow your own. And then the other tip is mix it with something else. So. I mean, my good standby for people that don't like to eat, eat greens, and greens are one of the most important foods, is to juice a pineapple. And actually, recently oh, here, they yeah. had pineapple on sale, uh, 99 cents for a whole pineapple, or one store had it for 79 cents. 
uh, they were not organic, uh, unfortunately. But um, you could just use a whole pineapple in two leaves, and you're going to pretty much taste the pineapple juice. You're not going to taste the leaves for most leaves except for dandelion. <laughs> if you juice pineapple with even one or two dandelion leaves or chicory leaves, whatever you want to call them, it's going to taste nasty. So stay away from dandelion if you're getting used to it. But kale, collard, spinach, I mean, any kind of common greens, lots of pine one pineapple and then just a few greens, you'll be able to get it in. And the other thing I would say is dilute the juice down. So, you know, use things like celery and cucumber as things that add water, but also more of a neutral flavor. Uh, to your juices so you're not just juicing straight yeah. pineapple with two leaves of kale you're juicing pineapple with celery with cucumber with some kale and that's just going to mellow mellow out the juice all the way around yeah and if you're growing one of them actually my favorite one to kind of lean people into grow uh eating or juicing or making smoothies with the greens the genera procumbens that is like super mild <laughs> Oh, yeah, Janera is so cool. You know what, Wendy, though, I never actually juiced it because, like, to me, it's more valuable. I put it in smoothies. I don't juice so much. Yeah, I mean, usually I, just, usually I just put it in salads, actually. Mine yeah. never really seems like, like, grow enough because, like, I mean, uh, I, could, yeah. I could, like, I don't know. I just I have some, but it's not, like, enough for me to, like, want to waste because when you juice, yeah. it does waste some. It does kick out some fiber. Yeah. I'd rather just get it into me so I feel if I'm eating it. Or I did freeze-dry some, actually make freeze-dry oh, Janera powder. Which is pretty crazy. Well, yeah, you, you didn't get to try that one. <laughs> that's a limited edition, man. Oh, I, my God. I tipped all my plants before the winter time, and yeah. actually, maybe that's why they're budding out and they're mm -hmm. they're growing good. But oh, yeah, man. I don't I don't have that much of that stuff. Oh, <laughs> the chips. I have never chips. made. I've never treated. Yeah, never never. Well, I, I freeze dried them and then I powdered them. So yeah. yeah. Oh, I like to. They see get them really there. crumbly if they're freeze dried, so they're very delicate. Any, they any are. leaves that are freeze dried. Yeah, yes. even like the dried ones, like the sun dried ones, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. any, any leaves pretty very delicate. delicate. Yeah. yeah, maybe like if you put like a sauce on them and bread them up, made your own kale chips, but it's Janera chips. Yes. Then the sauce oh. would kind of hold it together better. Yep. Yep. Mm. Or you can make it like a pesto and mortar and make like a sauce because it has like that gelatinous. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a, yeah. One of these days when I have like fields of Janera, I will be doing that. Trust me. <laughs> Oh, you can come over and make some. It's funny. <laughs> so what about sauces? First, I think salads are very important in a diet. And I think the way to eat a salad to make it enjoyable is to have a really delicious sauce. Um, any kind of sauce recipes you want to share with us? Yeah, so sauces and salad dressings, that's very important. Like Some people just don't like to eat salad straight. My dad, he does. He'll eat salad <laughs> straight. I'm like, Dad, I don't know how you do that. I mean, unless maybe it's tender greens out of my garden and they're tasted so good, I could eat it without sauce or dressing. But I like a dressing, so here's the thing, right? I mean, if, a, if you have to buy a store-bought dressing, hopefully it's an organic one with, like, low fat and not, not, not a lot of salt. To eat a salad, I think that's a good thing, but even better than to buy a pre-made salad dressing, which you can't control what they're putting in there. Most of the salad dressings are based around basically oil because oil is cheap, and they could charge you a bunch of money for the salad dressing that you're basically getting ripped off on, in my opinion. Because you're basically just buying oil with some herbs and spices and things. So I prefer to make mine all fresh. I mean, a simple one. Here's a real simple one, right? Macadamia nuts. And there's this cool place I get raw macadamia nuts in Hawaii shipped over. Mm. And actually, I brought a suitcase back full of <laughs> raw nuts that are sun-dried in the shell on um, this trip, this last trip. But basically, just uh, raw macadamia nuts, like a handful, and then maybe like a cup or maybe two cups, depending on how watery you want it, of like fresh squeezed OJ. Yeah, so once you have your base, Wendy, like with the, the juice and the and the nuts or seeds, then you could start adding additional flavor. So I know you like miso a lot. So you could use miso, and I use an organic miso. I get the low sodium kind, because um, there's a lot of salt in some of the misos, because I want more of the fermented umami flavor, yeah. not the, just the sodium. You could add salt. I don't like to add salt to my recipes personally, but you can add other flavorings, like different things like sauerkraut or kimchi, like just a yeah. tablespoon, blend it up in the blender, that are really impart a nice flavor in the sauce or salad dressing you're making. Um, I add different herbs and spices, so it could be like rosemary out of my garden, hot and spicy oregano out of my garden, or it could just be like, you know, Mexican seasoning or taco seasoning or Italian seasoning or curry seasoning. I have a lot of different seasoning blends um, mixed in there. And then, I mean, maybe I put some seaweed powder for some extra minerals and then some, you know, natural occurring, you know, salty flavor. Could taste maybe like the ocean. I put mushroom powders in there if you want more of a oh, mushroom wow. powder, yeah. you know, flavor. And then also got the benefits of the mushroom powders, including vitamin D, depending on the mushrooms, and different properties from shiitake and maitake mushrooms, which are usually in my mix. Wow. So it's like 
you just get to kind of like, I get to play in the kitchen every night yeah. is what I do. It's like, oh, I got this juice because I made carrot juice in the morning and the carrot juice is going to be my base for the, for the uh, you, you know, for the dressing. Sometimes if I don't have a base, then I'll just use like some coconut water, mm-hmm. right? Easy to pop over coconut. I got coconut water, but I never like to use water as a base. If I'm really lazy and don't have any kind of juice or water to use, then I could just use like a pound of tomatoes. So I put a pound of tomatoes in. As soon as I hit the blender on, you know, those pound of tomatoes are just ground up into basically tomato sauce. And then I add all in the nuts and the seeds and the different herbs and spices. And, you know, so I made like a marinara sauce the other night with sun-dried tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, uh, Italian seasoning. I put some raisins in there for sweetener. You can also use dates. I like to use whole foods. I don't like to add like sugar or might add some like apple cider, raw apple cider vinegar, or other kind of vinegars, like pomegranate vinegar, mm-hmm. raspberry vinegar. So it's like I have all these different ingredients that I just get to put a little bit of each one in. Sometimes yeah. it's simple. Sometimes it's more complex. Here's another real simple one for you guys. Um, it's like one of my favorite recipes. It's like sugar cane juice with lemon oh, juice. Yeah. That might be hard. So you could substitute like <laughs> coconut water if you don't have yeah. the sugar cane juice, <laughs> like some sweet coconut water with some lemon juice and then use some miso, garlic and, um, yeah, miso, garlic and tahini yeah. oh, or yeah. sesame seeds. I mean, that's just a classic, that's... like solid dressing, you know, no oil added. It's going to be lower calorie. And when you eat the dressings with, with some fat in your diet with your greens, you're going to get a higher uptake of the nutrition in the greens as well. That sounds so good. That sounds like a really good coleslaw. No, oh, yeah. No, I made that. You know, I haven't made that recipe with cabbage because I don't eat a lot of cabbage. I usually normally juice it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would that be really I have to try that one yeah that's Sugar a good one yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah and the miso like it's just I love like dressings and something about the Japanese salads like they just get the, the dressing just right and I think mm. yeah the miso yeah really they gotta have a lot of uh, salt flavor in there usually the ja- yeah. Japanese dressings yeah one of the recipes I like to make is just like a seaweed salad so I'll have mm. fresh greens from my garden then I'll use like the packaged seaweed try to get the stuff from Japan or Korea usually soak it and then maybe sprinkle some sesame seeds on top yeah. and make a miso style yeah. dressing for that. Oh man, I haven't made that, that in a while. Good. I have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so good. So, do you use um, like some people would use like as a a pizza or crust or something? What do you use for like substitute to that for whole foods? Like a leaf or something as a wrap or? Oh, okay, sure. So wrap. So vegetables? wraps or for pizza crusts? Pizza. What do I use? So I would like to do it more often because I'm kind of lazy. I guess they do make pre, pre-made pre like pizza crusts and wraps you could buy like at Whole Foods. Oh, yeah. For, from a brand that would I would, you know, get. It's called RARP, W-R-A-W-P, mm. RARP. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they make like these little pizza crusts. They're expensive as heck. And then they also make these basically wraps basically made out of fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds that you could roll up. So instead of using nori, these are like the expensive man's nori. Um, yeah. But I use nori because they're very inexpensive, and it's just it's just seaweed, yeah. which is rich in like the nori is rich in iodine, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so, or you could make your own. So, like if you just have like the young coconut meat, you know, you could yeah. just take that with a little coconut water, blend it up, and then pour that on a dehydrator sheet, on a nonstick sheet, and then you could basically make your own wraps. And they sell those also. They're paleo yeah. friendly. There's a company that makes little wraps out of the, the young coconut meat with, like, no other additives. Mm, wow. So that's really cool. So you can make your own wraps. I don't generally do that too yeah. much because I'm kind of lazy. Um, I sometimes get some free samples at trade shows and I'll eat them, but otherwise I don't really buy that kind of stuff. And then for the crusts, that one company, Rob, also has the pizza crust that I could eat. And they're basically, once again, made with fruits and vegetables. And then I'll make my own. So, like, last year when I had lots of cauliflower, I basically take all the cauliflower, put in a food processor, I food processor it down with like some mac nuts and other herbs and spices and I'll basically then put that in my dehydrator in like in a little form of a circle and I make basically like uh, pizza crusts Wow! That's and then I'll top that with like a white sauce with like basically mac- macadamia nuts and coconut mm-hmm. um, water and then I make a red sauce with like tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes and Italian seasoning with some raisins, and then I'll come out to the garden like pick greens. Yeah. Could be basil if it's that time of year. Could be spinach in the in the off season when I don't have the basil. Put on like chopped up olives, a pit of kalmata olives that have been soaked, and then also I'll put on like you know red pepper and some chopped onions and stuff on there. And so I actually have pictures of that on my Instagram. Mm. Um, before I go on, actually, if you guys, if my recipes are making you mouth water, <laughs> um, you guys could have total access to the recipes actually because I did. I, well, I didn't write it, but my ex-girlfriend <laughs> wrote a book or basically uh, would copy down what I would make for dinner every night when we were together, and she would basically write it down, take a picture, and then she assembled that into a book that she's selling at gygbook.com, 
which basically talks about you know my philosophies about preparing food and many recipes that I made along the way. And you know my my goal for the book is not necessarily to get you to make my recipes or follow my recipes, but it's to give you guys a starting point and some ideas on how you could start preparing yep. more fruits and vegetables and get them into you. And hopefully that'll create some cre- creativity when you see what I'm doing. And maybe you can even make what I'm doing better. And if you do, let me know because then <laughs> I'll probably adopt what you're doing as well because I'm always trying to improve my uh, my process and oh, techniques. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that book. I, like, again, like you said, it's just like an idea book to inspire maybe new ideas or, or you know, a lot of times the way how I make food is whatever is available to. That's what exactly it. What's on sale, you said. The farmer's market, eat seasonally. Yeah. yeah. But that curry rice thing. I really have to try that sometime. It's just, that was a lot of ingredients. <laughs> no, it's so good, though. It's so yeah, good. I mean, actually, I think she put that one together. She made the sauce on that one because mm. I just, I had the rice. And, yeah, it was actually, it was based around all lock. You've eaten it all lock, yeah, right? Yeah, I love that place. So it's based around all locks, like rice. This is this is our, what well, was our, what well, is or our, our interpretation of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good, though. I like that recipe. Yeah, that's, that's a really good place. So what else, um, how about soups? You want to touch on soups? Oh, yeah, soups. So once again, I mean, for normal soups, people would basically just make a soup stock. So they'd basically have boiled water. They'd take herbs and vegetables or chicken or whatever, boil it in there. Then they basically have their soup stock, which is basically just water with some flavoring of some different herbs and spices or meats or whatever you guys are putting in there. So, like, for me, I try to actually minimize the amount of water that I drink because I want to get the water from... The best place to get water on the earth, in my opinion, is the from fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables yeah. are basically absorbing the water and they're filtering it for you so that you don't have to. They're also putting the minerals in a form that you can absorb instead of water that's coming out of your tap, even if you do filter it, right? It can still have contaminants in there like fluorine, chlorine, um, fluoride, chlorine, like all these MTBEs. Who knows what else is in there? And then we're, we're not even going to get into talking about... Um, uh, being heavy water or not heavy water, because that's a, that's an extra topic subject. <laughs> so anyway, so I just try to get my water from fruits and vegetables. So my soups are, once again, based around fruits and vegetables. So for example, I'll probably be making this pretty soon here, is I basically get organic bell peppers, and then I basically juice them. So I make bell pepper juice, like 32 ounces or 64 ounces, and then I'll take that juice, and then I'll blend that in the vacuum blender with some nuts or seeds to mm, give my so give my creamy. soup some body so it's yeah. creamy. So like macadamia nuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, whatever nuts I have, Brazil nuts. And then I have a creamy, basically, soup. And then I could also, in that soup, I'll also add flavorings, much like I'm making a salad dressing. I could add some miso, could add some sauerkraut, some kimchi, could add taco seasoning, could add Italian seasoning, could add curry seasoning if I want a curry soup or depending on what way. I mean... Dried herbs and spices are so amazing in addition to the fresh herbs that I'm growing in my garden. And then, uh, and then, so I basically have now I have the soup base, which is basically just a liquid. So it's basically yeah. like a dressing, but it's just just more watery because mm-hmm. it's basically like a dressing I would yeah. make, which is a lot more watery. Yep. And then I just come out to my garden. And I harvest, you know, I'll come around with a little, you know, uh, like colander, and I'll harvest like greens from all over my garden, whatever's ripe, cucumbers, zucchini, whatever's ripe, and then I'll shred those up spiralize them up in the case of cucumbers or zucchini i'll take tomatoes chop them up into little pieces into little cubes i might take some seaweed that i bought at asian store and i'll soak that under vacuum it expands i put that in the soup i could add some natto which is basically um fermented soybeans that have mm-hmm. vitamin k2 which can be deficient in a vegan diet also that natto kinase which is a powerful enzyme that could basically clean out your arteries um and then i just add a bunch of stuff in there <laughs> <laughs> chop up you know put some Maybe cooked, I've been adding sometimes cooked mushrooms to it, mm-hmm. you know, that have been, like, not not hot. So this is a cold soup. This is not heated. I don't heat anything up. Of course, you could heat it up if you'd like to have it warm. I don't like to really eat things that are that are hot, kind of messes up with my mouth. Um, and also, it takes extra energy from our, for our, from our body to digest things that are either too cold or too hot. So I prefer to eat things mostly at room temperature. Mm. So, I mean, that's basically the soup. I mean, it's just fruits and vegetables, you know, um, and seaweeds maybe some beans in there like as, as you know yeah. as, as a chunky stuff in there to give some texture and then i got the you know the rich delicious fatty soup with nutrient dense mm-hmm. you know juice made around nutrient dense juice That's and nice. actually you tasted some the other day because that's some freeze-dried oh my god that, that was, was my so pepper good. soup freeze-dried pepper <laughs> soup where i just removed the water that was so that's so that's concentrated so i mean yeah like i'm thinking that concentrated if you made like another like a, a juice or maybe say like, like blend another 
bell pepper or whatever, right? Juice, and then just pop that freeze dried stuff back in. That's what I did actually. So I had that. I had the freeze dried soup, and then I made. I think I made like some extra uh, like celery juice. So then I basically uh, um, added celery juice to that to basically expand it, wow. and then I ate it when I was the flavor actually even in more Hawaii. Intense, okay. Even more intense because yeah. now you're just adding. Concentrated fruits yeah. and vegetables to more fruits and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I try to do. Eat more fruits and vegetables, guys <laughs> and girls. <laughs> yeah, I think the best thing about raw foods is that it's not so technical, like if you're cooking or baking things, you know, where you have to get certain things just right. But it's more about creativity and the exactly. quality of your food because all the flavors all come from the plants. And if it's like poor quality, then you the taste dish it. You make, yeah, you it's know. not going to taste as good. But you don't need that sort of like crazy skills like say you're trying to bake a bread or something you know it's that's i mean here's the thing like you set the rules so if you think you messed up then you messed up you think you made the masterpiece of the world you <laughs> made the masterpiece of the world right it's all on your pal and the other thing is if you make something you don't like you're gonna learn what you did that made it that you didn't like and then you're gonna do it differently next time and i've had a lot of practice doing this <laughs> so normally these days I, I i don't mess up too much i i still mess up you know it's rare I made a ma I made a pretty nasty juice actually yesterday that I got a drink. I mean, I thought it was nasty. Yeah, what's the worst juice you've made? Let's talk about that. I don't know, but lately I'll tell you. I mean, I, I basically juiced the turmeric and ginger, and the lemon, and then I had that juice, and I could drink that straight fine, right? Mm -hmm. And then I took the pulp because there's still nutrition in the pulp or some mm -hmm. juice in the pulp. So then I juiced celery juice, and then I put the pulp from the ginger, turmeric, and lemon back through the juicer when I'm running the celery through. Uh... So now I have basically a ginger, turmeric, mostly ginger flavored celery juice now the celery was kind of old from whole foods and then the, gi the the ginger was in there and it just i don't know i didn't really i mean i could drink the ginger turmeric shots all day but the with the no, celery juice and it was 32 ounces oh, like yeah. i was like this is not i don't like this but like dude you gotta just drink it you made it you gotta <laughs> drink it it's good, it's for, good you. for you it's better than probably what most people are drinking yeah. anyways and it'll be over it and you don't have to make it again <laughs> and i'm not making that again but maybe some of you guys might like that i personally Something was, I mean, I'd yeah. rather drink those shots straight. I'd rather drink three, two ounces right. of that straight up juice because that tastes way better to me than this funky celery ginger stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> there's this thing about like how I can take a lot of bitter foods, but once you add the, like, the sweet with the bitter, it's really weird. So, Winnie, I think the last thing I want to share with people is actually I want to share with them the concept of blended salad. And this might sound weird to some of you guys, but basically it's like making my salad dressing like I would make and put everything in the blender you would make to make a salad dressing, like all fresh ingredients. And then also put all your greens in the blender too, so now you're basically just blending up your greens with your salad dressing, so you have basically like, you could call it a green mush, you could call it a green <laughs> smoothie. I just call it a blended salad, because basically everything that you would eat in a salad, in a smoothie, and I, actually I did this on vacation, because it's just a lot more convenient yeah. and easy, instead of just sitting there and eating for two hours, because I like to chew my food really well, which is another very important thing when you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, is uh, you know if I vacuum blend them, that I doesn't mean I could chug it down, but I could eat a little bit slower, you know, get the mouth feel and just swallow it and get the benefits of all the different greens and all the different foods that I would have put in dressing anyways. And it's a lot more convenient to say I'm like running to the airport because I'm catching yeah. a flight. I could just make a blended salad because I yeah. don't have time to eat it and then get that into me. So, I mean, I think in the end, I really want to encourage people to eat more fruits and vegetables. I'm not ever going to try to convert you to any kind of diet style, vegan, raw, yeah. whatever. I don't really care. But I think the whole message, my message is to eat eat more fruits and vegetables and especially the highest quality possible grow them yourself if you can and displace all the processed foods and all the animal foods in excess especially all the grass-fed junk that you're eating or the non-grass-fed animal foods and I mean uh, you know and, and really eat more plants and, and reduce the amount of animal foods and processed foods because they're taking a toll on the planet guys and I mean that, that's just my final words and the plant foods are the healthiest foods on the planet according to my research absolutely well John thank you so much I sure you guys enjoyed well hopefully you guys enjoy this video i am just you're getting me hungry <laughs> all right great i might have a few more things you could try here awesome I can't wait. <laughs> yeah so if you guys want a juicer or blenders be sure to go over and check out discount juicers and support john and his work i he's just a wealth of knowledge he's got over thousands of episodes 2500 videos now yeah well on total on youtube 1500 on gardening it's crazy all right, so yeah, be sure to like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and um, subscribe to this channel if you have not, and go over and check out John's channel. I'll leave all his IG and um, YouTube channels just below this video. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Bye.